What's up guys? Welcome to another episode here at F-Line Garage where, once again, we're still working on this LR4 because we love it so much. But really, uh, if you watched this last video here, you can see that I took out the fuel rails, the injectors, um, the valve covers, all that good stuff. So what we're going to do today is take out the radiator, the water pump, um, thermostat, kind of every, all the ancillary stuff like up in the front. Uh, drain the coolant, do all that good stuff so we can get to the valve, um, uh, I'm sorry, the cam uh, actuators, the chains, and all that good stuff. Uh, I have the crank puller coming soon and the holding tool and all that good stuff. That's being delivered here shortly, so I just want to get ready for that. But um, yeah, let's take out the radiator, the fan, all that good stuff. Uh, how hard can it be? My goal for today is to remove um this front cover here here the thermostat and all these hoses and hopefully get the radiator fan and uh drain the coolant that's going to be kind of my plan right now and then we can kind of work on the belts and all that other good stuff that's another thing i'm going to need is a belt uh, i did order all the supplies for the timing kit so that should be coming here shortly Auto Haas AZ and Atlantic British sourced all these parts. Uh, not a sponsor, just where I'm sourcing parts. So cleaned up a little bit in here and uh, yeah, let's start removing some more parts. I have everything lined up over here. Uh, this, the front grill comes off easy. It's just four tabs up top and you pull. Um, but I have everything lined up here with some other extra crap. I'm reorganizing as usual, so um, Yep, we got the valve covers and then each each bank, how it goes. So um, I'm going to be cleaning up every single thing before I put it back, if it's going back. And um, my two new parts, battery, intake, the broken Y piece, all that good stuff. So let's get going over there, though. So I got the passenger side out. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 bolts and i forgot to take one out and when it came off it broke so i'm gonna have to do something about this whoops uh lesson learned don't forget about this one it's right by the tang where you uh pry it off there's one there and one here so um i'm gonna do something about that not sure what but um yeah now i'm gonna start draining the antifreeze or the coolant whatever you want to call it uh, so I can take out the thermostat because everything's up. I want to drain it down so I make less of a mess. So let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome back because it's a new day. I still didn't finish up what I was going to say by removing all this. So I'm coming back to you guys. It's been Thanksgiving. It's been a whole heck of a lot of stuff. So um, we're going to continue where we left off with removing the front. And I'm going to tell you some of the problems that I've had so far. So let me share it with you. Well, down here, I got the water or um, power steering pump right here, and I could not get the pulley off for the life of me. I soaked it in PB Blaster. I did everything. There's only three bolts uh, that you take off, and then you're supposed to be able to pry it off, and you have to remove that before you can remove this cover up here. Um, it took me three days of soaking it, uh, hitting it with a hammer. Uh, I finally got my crowbar out and was able to pry against it. That didn't do much. Um, I, at some point, I looked up how much it was to replace this, and it was only 30 bucks. So I re uh, made the executive decision here to uh, just wail on it. And I ended up taking this entirely huge crowbar back there and using a lot of leverage, and it came off. And uh, I did ruin it. It is bent. And this is it here. You can see all the hammer marks. Uh, I mean, guys, I was wailing on this thing, but it's off and uh, I'm just going to replace it. I may even just replace a entire new, entirely new water or uh, power steering pump anyway. Um, but yeah, that's it. Here's all the rest of the parts. Um, I kind of just left some things intact. So I remembered how to do this because I'm not doing this in one day. So uh, between some notes, laying it out in order, taking it off, I just got this uh, cover off. And uh, I ran into another issue. When I was trying to take the fan pulley off, the fan clutch, uh, I rotated the motor. 
The cams were not locked like I thought they would be. And so what ended up happening was I went to retime everything so I can get the cam locks back in. And this slipped off. This Now it's tight, but before it was not. That slipped off. How loose is this? Oh man, now it's tight. But it was so loose it came off the gears here. And, oh, I guess it is pretty loose. But I mean, it was so loose it came off this uh, sprocket. So now what I have here is um, out of alignment, out of timing, and a valve is hitting a um, is hitting a piston. So I have stopped rotating the motor. What I'm going to do is take off these here and rotate the motor to the safe position and uh, uh, then rotate the cams to be able to get them where they need to be. So that's what I'm gonna work on. Uh, I'm gonna try to do this without removing the radiator and condenser, uh, AC condenser, but we'll see. Um, I don't know if that's all gonna fit. Everyone says you have to remove it. I always try to try it before. But um, anyway, how hard can it be? Let's uh, keep moving this. So I got the crank position sensor in. I did have to modify mine because I went with a cheap tool kit. But now I got the big jack stand out. This is what I usually use for the excursions and heavy cars. I got everything timed up here. The crank puller, uh, crank pulley remover with everything here. Um, I do have the jack stand holding this up as nice as I can. Uh, it is solid. And then I got a big enough breaker bar, hope, with then the um, Harbor Freight jack handle. Uh, it's the biggest thing I got that fits over it. So we're gonna tug on this, pull down because this is going to be reverse threaded. So um, wish me luck. That easily did the trick. Um, I mean, super easy. Uh, okay, not super easy, but I mean, I was expecting to have to hang on this bar break loose it really just took a, a really good pull and it started to move so i'm gonna use a ratcheting one to kind of speed this process up but uh yeah man this is super super uh convenient so far and uh wow i'm i'm thrilled how hard can it be so i got to the point where i got all of the bolts out of here and now i need to take this pulley off and this is the pulley tool that i got and remember, if you've watched these other videos up here, you will notice that uh, I have not removed the radiator or AC condenser, uh, cooler thingy, whatever, in front. It's all right here. I was trying to get away with not removing as much stuff, but this is what I'm running into. I have to put this puller in and I can't make it. It won't fit. So. It's time to take the radiator out. I don't want to bend fins. I don't want to do all that. So, um, yep, unfortunately, the radiator and all of this is going to be coming out. But that's okay. It is what it is. I was just trying to uh, save a step. I am dying here trying to get this radiator out because these stinking poles sit in here and lock it in, right? So I'm trying to like lower the bottom. I'm trying to do all these stuff. I'm emptying out every single screw imaginable and come to find out, you press this in and you pull up. Oh, how hard can it be? I guess right now, very hard when you don't even know that little tip. So right, right there, you put a screwdriver and I use this and I just pulled up while I use this to depress this and we're good to go. Now all this marring is because I was trying to turn it around. I thought it maybe it would thread out. Um, and then these go in here. Um, I mean, gosh, I've tried everything. So this is a really good tip. Do it. Listen, um, don't fight with it for an hour like I have and then throw things. So, um, okay, both of them are out. Wow, imagine that. Now it'll lift out. So, all right, moving on. I'm working on taking out these variator bolts. I mean, look at the gunk. This is pure paste. And I don't think that's how they're supposed to be. I mean, I can hardly pull them out. They are just pasted in there. So I think the insides of these are so gunked up. 
but uh, I'm gonna still pull off everything and um, yeah, I just wanted to show you that. That is just insane. So, oh my gosh, it's just, wow, it's thick. So anyway, it's really good we're doing this. Well, I got everything off the front, made a huge mess, got the radiator out. I realize you do have to take this out. I have it timed and back. I have it timed and back. Let's see, if I timed and back, I got the cam timers on it. This has a key at the bottom. It's a notch right here. That is at the six o'clock position pointing down. I have the cam or the crank lock in the back at the cam or crank position sensor. Uh, now, and I got the chains off. So I took the chains off so that I could rotate the cam just ever so slightly to be able to get them timed and uh, kind of cleaned up the mating surfaces here. And now it is time to start putting everything back on, but I still have a few things to take off here. Can we... um, I gotta take off the old um, tensioners and everything else, line up the new parts, but um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I do have a uh, ultrasonic cleaner that I got that I'm using for the cam variators. I appreciate you guys watching. Please like, subscribe, do all those cool things so that I can keep doing what I love most. I appreciate it. I hope you learned something. And uh, the next video, we'll be trying to put everything back together on this thing because uh, I want to see if this thing will work. If not, oh well, we move on. But how hard can it be, guys? See you next time.